Oh, my name is David Samikwa, a young climate change leader from Malawi. Climate change is real and it's affecting each and everyone, not only in Malawi, not only in Africa, but the whole world. We've seen floods, heat waves, and even a number of things that tell us that there is climate change. I understand that there are many people who until today don't agree or don't believe that climate change is real. But let me tell you, if we to go back in the days when our grandparents or even our fathers and mothers, if we were to ask them about how the condition was like, or even some of us who have lived a number of years, we will differentiate, we will tell that there is that change. So if we were to give an example of how the pattern of the runs were in the past, we will see that between October and December we were having heavy rains and people were planting in between those months. So people could plant as early as October, even September, and uh, harvest within December or January. But this time around, people are planting even as late as January, as late as December, and harvesting April, May, and thereabout. This tells that the uh, climate has changed. And we've talked about floods. These are things that were not happening in the past. Why is it happening now? People are cutting down trees carelessly. The forests are bare now. The land is bare. All the trees are gone. And waters are just running all over and going into the rivers. These waters that are running from uphill and around are causing siltation in the rivers. And in the end, we've seen floods. And even people, the way they are constructing their houses, people are constructing deep in the streams, closer to the waters, clearing all the trees. This is also causing a number of problems. We've also seen an increase in temperature, which we're saying it's heat wave. And not only that, we've been talking about uh, a number of issues that are happening. The dry spells, where the rains will fail, people will plant, but two or three months or even a few weeks later, all the lawns are gone and the plants start uh, drying. So all this is a sign that there is climate change. Things are changing. People are experiencing showers, snow and other things within April, May, June and July. It was very, very cold during those days. But this time around, it's totally different. Now, as a climate change leader from Malawi, what is it that I'm doing? I'm making sure that people are accessing information sensitizing fellow young people and communities about climate change, making sure that they understand, they know what climate change is. And at the same time, I'm trying to mobilize fellow young people to do a number of activities, which include cleanup campaigns, planting of trees, and taking care of the old shrubs. Because we've seen that mostly we plant trees, but they don't grow. So the other way around is doing afforestation by making sure that those trees, those old shrubs, the natural, what you're calling natural regeneration, we're making sure that young people are taking part and making sure that the lost glory is restored. So in the process of restoring the lost glory, we are involving young people. But this time around, let me talk about young people or students in schools. What is their role? What is it that they can do? Young people are energetic, are in a huge population, a large number that can contribute positively in the fight against climate change. So the students that we have now, they can do better, they can do more. Let's think of a simple initiative where we can say every young person, every student is planting a tree per year. This can help to restore. This can help to have forests, to have orchards and trees back. Assuming a school has 1,000 students, and each student plants a tree per year. It means we have 1,000 trees. The following year, they should also plant another tree by the end of eight years. So assuming that that person, that student is in standard one and plants a tree this year or two, come next year, by the time that student will get to standard eight or level 10, will have 10 trees of his own. It's something that can be done. It all needs us. It all needs combined efforts. If we are to impart the knowledge, the skills in the students that we have, we'll see that there'll be change. And why are we talking about students now? I said earlier, these are the energetic population. These are the people that need the information. They didn't go through whatever it is. If we to give some examples, in the past, we had wild animals. 
these young people, these students have never seen wild animals like hyenas. We're talking about hare, we're talking about rabbits, all that. They're all gone. They're in instincts because we destroyed the forest. We destroyed their habitat. We destroyed their homes. But we can restore that. It begins with you. It begins with me. What are we supposed to do? We need to instill that same spirit in the children that they need to be taking care of the forest. They need to be taking care of the natural resources that we have. So if these students are given the opportunity, they are informed, they can do better. They can plant more trees. Each and every student can be given an opportunity to plant a tree per year, even per month, even every six months. It means each and every student can do more. These students should be trained to take care of the trees. If they're to plant a tree, they should be taking care of that tree, just like the way they take care of their uniform when they're waking up in the morning. They know, I'm going to school, I need to put on my uniform, I need to do this. Let's train them, let's tell them. It is important, it is their future. Think of this. If we cut down all the trees, these students that we have now, where are they going to get the charcoal from? Where are they going to get the timber from? Students, think around that. If you want to plant a tree today, where are you going to get the fruits from? Where are you going to get the wood from? It begins with you. Do something about it. Make sure you plant a tree. Take care of it as you take care of your clothes. Make sure the surroundings are clean. Make sure the tree is growing healthy. Protect it. It's your future. It's my future. It's our future. And it begins today. We don't need to wait any longer. Because the longer we wait, the dead rate's becoming. People are cutting down trees every day. Chow is being produced every day. And these students are innovative. They can come up with ideas that we need to help. We need to promote them to ensure that these innovations are put into place. They are being used. The innovations like use of biogas, the innovations like maybe briquettes and other innovations that can be promoted can help in solving the crisis around energy. Many people are relying on the, uh, the unclean energy, which is destroying our environment. And if these young people's innovations can be utilized, then we can solve these problems of clean energy, where we can have biogas, we can have briquettes, we can have many other off-grid hydro plants and even windmills that can help. And we need to train these young people so that they can utilize, they can do that and do more and solve the problems that we have. Students, don't just be idle. Play alone. Do something about it. Save the world. Save nature. And together, we can prosper. Thank you so much.